Hello ladies and gentlemen, MarauderX here, back with more game collecting goodness. Uh, continuing the Wii collection that I've got here, so we'll just jump right into that. Starting off with Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, the, the, the big one uh, with the Wiimote and the, the soundtrack. Uh, you can't say no to a golden Wiimote and the Zelda soundtrack. Um, you, you just you just can't. It's it's fantastic. I haven't really gotten into Skyward Sword. Um, I spent a couple hours in it just learning how the, the motion control works, but I haven't gotten far into it. Doesn't seem as earth breaking, earth shattering, ground breaking, earth breaking, earth breaking. We're gonna do earth breaking now. Um, as some of the other other Zelda games, but uh, it I don't see it, it. Seems to have very polarizing reviews, but I. Uh, obviously, I liked it enough to, to warrant spending the the money on the big box, so. Uh, following that, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, probably one of my favorite Zelda games, and I'll, I'll probably catch some flack for that. But I like the dark atmosphere. Uh, I don't really like the wolf segments, but I mean, every Zelda game has, except for Link to the Past, has something... Uh, it, well, I, you can't even say Link to the Past, because all, all the earlier games... But um, Ocarina of Time had the, the, the kid adult section, so this one has the human wolf, or humanoid wolf. Uh, whatever his actual race is, I still am kind of confused on that because I don't have the Hyrule Historia yet, so I will one of these days. So I know the ins and outs of the Zelda world, but I really did like this one. I had to pick this up on the Wii. This was the first game I picked up on the Wii, and I do not regret that at all. Uh, I spent hours playing it. Um, one of these days, I might even do an LP of it. Who knows? Uh, but I do love the, the dark atmosphere of it. It it was fantastic. It's a great, great game. Uh, next up, we have Mad World. Again, a game by Sega that proves that if they want to do something different that doesn't suck, they can. But they don't like taking risks because risks equal spending money that they may not get back. But fantastic game, one of the few M-rated games on the Wii, and uh, it's amazing. It's very monochromatic. It's all black, white, and red, and the red is all blood, and that's all that all that the red is used for. But you carry around a chainsaw weapon and you cut people up. It's amazing uh, for really odd 3D, 2D esque com. It's really hard to say because the colors make make perception feel really weird. But it's a great game. If you have a Wii, you definitely need to check it out. It's also dirt cheap right now because it just it didn't sell. So, uh, but it's also one of always seen every Wii list I see. It's it's usually up on the top of uh, games that you should have if you have that system. Uh, next up, Mario Kart Wii. Because again, if you had friends, you don't anymore because you threw a banana peel at their face or launched a blue shell. The fucking blue shells. Nothing nice to say about the blue shells, but I mean it's a Mario Kart game, so it's blue shells are everywhere. Um, except when you're in last place, you're the only. If you specifically are in last place, there will never be a blue shell ever. But if you're in first place, everyone behind you has a blue shell. Little known fact about Mario Kart, um, but it's it's fun. It's got the the multiplayer, and you can play carts or uh, motorcycles, little dirt bikes. So, what's up? Another really fun game that I didn't think I'd like as much as I did, Mario Strikers Charged. I never really got into Mario Strikers games. It's, I mean, I never really got into Mario sports games. Mario Tennis, Mario Baseball, Mario Basketball. Apparently Mario Basketball, the one on the, the Game Boy, was apparently really good. Uh, but this I picked up and I, I played the hell out of this game when it first came out. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. I never really expected a sports game to really grab me, but it's it's a sports game like how Americans treat sports because we don't. We just we make a mockery of sports, like football. We're the only country on the planet that plays our football. Uh, the rest of the world plays soccer, which they call football because it makes more sense. Because in American football, you actually very rarely kick the ball. You catch it with your hand. It's it's handball. Hand pig ball. Anyway, this game, fantastic. Uh, excellent soccer game. All of the characters have different power-ups that make them really cool to play. You can end up using a, a super kick to kick dozens of balls at your opponent's face. 
And I gotta stop saying the word balls because I'm just start giggling here in a bit. Because I'm five, apparently. Uh, next up, we've got the Metal Slug Anthology because I can't say no to Metal Slug. Um, this is not the best version of the Metal Slug Anthology. It's also on the PS2 and I think one other console. I think it may be on the 360. I'm not quite sure. Um, but this one is not the best one because of the control scheme. You can use a classic controller. Uh, you can use a classic controller or a GameCube controller, but you can't use either. I forget which one's which, which one you can, but it's it's dick. It doesn't make any sense why you can use one but not the other. They just didn't take the time to actually program the controls. And I think you can use a GameCube controller but not the classic controller, which makes no bloody sense whatsoever. Uh, and then the, the Wiimote and Nunchuck controls are just piss poor in general. Uh, like, because they all want to use a waggle to throw a grenade, so you're just sitting here moving and you're it's a Metal Slug game, so you're twitching, and you're just sitting here throwing your precious grenades like candy, and then you're like, I have no grenades, because this game pisses me off. Uh, but play it with an actual controller, and it's not bad, but if you can, get it on like the PS2 or something where the control scheme doesn't piss you off because of waggles. Just because it has motion controls doesn't mean you have to implement motion controls on a game that motion controls aren't suited for. Keep that in mind for the future. Uh, next up, Metroid Other M. I played this for a little bit when it first came out. I thought this would be a fantastic game because, hey, uh, N Team Ninja's working on a Metroid game. Nothing could go wrong with this. And then everything went wrong with it. Um, all of my impressions of Samus went out the window. Some people say that that's just being, that's being too rough on the game and that it's you should look at it from her perspective. No, uh, they've taken a character who was the poster child for strong female characters in gaming and made her just a whiny bitch and I cannot forgive them for that um, if you can mute it and ignore half the story it's a good game but the other, the, the rest of it it's just saddening next up Metroid Prime 3 Corruption I played this about halfway through uh, and I played this without actually playing the other Metroid games because again I got a Wii before I got uh, access to the other Metroid games and I had a lot of fun with it, but I still I don't like the first-person aspects of a Metroid game. I always liked the side-scrolling. That's why I thought I'd like this, because this is more of an action-type game uh, that would be closer to the roots than a first-person game, but I just, eh, there's, there's a lot about it I couldn't get into. It's a, it's a good trilogy, it really is. Uh, and the, the Metroid Prime trilogy is better than Other M, because Samus isn't a whiny bitch in it. Uh, she's still the strong, independent woman that she always has been. You, you, <laughs> because I'm a strong, independent black woman. White teenager, no! Um, American Dad. We've been quoting that for a while. I don't know how it got brought up in conversation, but it did. And now I regret it. Next up, we have Muramasa the Demon Blade. Um, it's a vanillaware game, so it's a side-scrolling action game involving lots of killing things with swords, usually. Uh, Vanillaware's big for Odin Sphere, Princess Crown. And they've got a game that's supposedly coming out called Dragon's Crown uh, in the future. So it's, it's a great samurai-style game where you go around collecting swords and beating up on bad guys. Uh, it's, and the art style is just gorgeous because they're great at doing the 2D hand-drawn art style. Uh, well worth whatever you have to pay to, to pick it up. Uh, there's also a version of Muramasa coming out on the Vita. So if you have a Vita, you can try that, too. So uh, Next up, we've got new Super Mario Bros. Wii. Do you have friends? Do you want to keep them? Don't play this game with them. <laughs> um, no, if you have friends who are good at co-op, it's a fun co-op game. Um, precision platforming, however, is a bitch because you knock each other into things. So if Two people cannot occupy the same space. So if one person jumps onto a narrow platform, followed by another person, you can either knock them off or bounce off of them and fall off to your death. Um, and if you have friends who aren't good at co-op, who like dicking you over, then this game will last all of about five minutes, because they will kill everyone and then just run to the exit and leave you in a bubble. That's how this game... Those are the two ways this game is played. Either that or you just play it by yourself and play it like a, an old-school Mario title, which is kind of fun. That's how I played it. Um, I played it with some friends of mine as well, both on the, the co-op and not co-op camps. 
Uh, never finished it with either of those uh, two groups, but uh, beat it myself, so that's that's all there was to it. Next up, Knight's Journey of Dreams. Um, it sucks. I got nothing else to say about it. I was very, very disappointed in it because I love Knight's Into Dreams on the Saturn. It was a great game. This one, they tried to add too many modern conventions to it. Oh, let's give voice acting. Okay, Knight's is a genderless character. This is an argument that happens all the time on my Knight's Into, Knights Into Dreams Let's Play on the Saturn. Uh, what gender is Knight's? Oh, it's whatever you want it to be. It's, it can be whatever you want it to be, but Knight's by itself is defined by the series creator that it's neutral. It's not male or female because you can't have children merging with either a male or female character because you have a male and female child. So you either have sexual overtones or homosexual overtones depending on how you go for it. So they gave Knights a voice, and it's voiced by a female voice actor. So that led, oh, Knights is a woman. No, because then you've got a little boy fusing with it, and then you've... Well, how do you explain that? How do you talk to kids... Because this is geared more toward a younger audience. How do you talk to them about that without saying it's gender neutral? The best way to say it is it's whatever you want Knights to be. If you want Knights to be male, if you want Knights to be female, great, but... There is such a thing as gender neutral, and that's what Knights is supposed to be. Um, and the fact that they tried to give a voice, and they tried to give more of a story, and they just changed the characters, and just changed uh, too many changes that were not necessary. I was so disappointed in it. Uh, next up, No More Heroes. No More Heroes DOS. Um, also, some fairly rare M-rated games on the Wii. Uh, you play as Travis Touchdown, a gamer geek who buys a lightsaber on eBay, basically. And when that's your your backstory, you know the game's going to be awesome. And it is. Uh, you go around killing assassins to raise your rank in the League of Assassins. And then the second game, it all comes back to bite you in the ass. And you get a second sword. So, I mean, hey, you're now dual wielding lightsabers. How much more of a badass can you be? Um, overly sexual overtones with one of the characters, but there's it says sexual themes and strong language. Uh, it's if cleavage offends you, uh, but a lot of the the comments relate to sex. So there's a lot of innuendo, but it's a fun game. The boss battles are amazing. Uh, the mini games are tedious because you always you have these mini games to build up money and. They're, they're, and get items in the game, and those are just tedious as, as hell, so. But the rest of the game is fantastic. The core of the game is amazing, so if you get a chance to pick those up, well worth well worth playing. Uh, next up, Okami! Um, and this is actually the, the messed up version. I don't know if I'll be able to sh if you'll be able to see that on... Uh, the first printing of the games, they actually lifted cover art directly from IGN that still has the IGN watermark on it, which is what I was trying to show. So, if, if you look close enough on some of them, it still says IG, and you, can, you could have sent this in, or sent in your name, and they would have sent you a replacement cover art for it that didn't have that. But I thought, hey, that's a huge fuck up. Let's keep that, because that's fun. Uh, but I figured Okami would have been great on the Wii because of the, uh, the brush mechanics. Not so much so, it's better on the PS2. Um, but it's Okami, and I wanted to support the, uh, I wanted to support the studios, uh, Clover, for working on it, but by the time this came out, Clover was actually being shut down, which is a huge disappointment because the PS2 version of this was nominated for so many awards and accolades, it just didn't sell enough to warrant the money they spent into it, but this is one of my go-to games to say video games can be art. So, that's... Whatever, if you can get it on the PS2, get it on the PS2. If you can't get it on the PS2, the Wii version is an acceptable substitute, uh, but... If you ever want to say that video games can be artistic, this is one of those games that you can use for it. Uh, next up, Phantom Brave, Till We Meet Again. Do you like throwing your characters at other characters to fight them? You can do that in this game. This game is just, it's weird. It's, um, it's an NIS game, Nipponichi Software. Um, so uh, they're famous for a line, I'm going to overlord your face off. It's what, Makai Kingdom? Yeah. yeah. It's famous with us. I'm not sure if well, it's... Well, it's famous with us. Well, I mean, I... We, I, th I think they're more known for the, like, Disgaea. Well, yeah, they're, they're more known for the Disgaea series, but 
when you have a line that says, I'm, and it's a voice acted line by a well known voice actor, I forget his name, I think it's Crispin Steve. Freeman. Is it Crispin or is it Steve Bloom? I think it's Crispin Freeman. Either Crispin Freeman or Steve Bloom. Kulix thinks it's, it's Crispin Freeman, so I'm going to go with, with Freeman. Uh, when Crispin Freeman, a well known voice actor, goes, I'm going to overlord your face off, there's nothing you can do but laugh. Uh, but that, this has nothing to do with Fake and Brave. Because he's not in this game, is it? No, no he's no. in the PSP version. He's in the PSP version, but he's not in the Wii version. This game is on the PS2, the PSP, and the Wii. It goes PS2, Wii, PSP in terms of release date. Uh, each game, they add just a little bit more to it to justify why you spent money on the previous version. Uh, but it's an interesting tactical RPG where there is no grid, it's just area of radius. Uh, it's, it's a weird, weird game, but I had to get it because it's Nipponichi software and they started growing on me after playing Makai Kingdom and overlording people's faces off. So, uh, yeah, Phantom Brave till we meet again. Uh, this one comes with a digital art disc. If you got the PS2 version, you get a soundtrack, and if you get the PSP version, you get a bunch of characters that were released in other Nipponichi games that were not in the other two installments. So, yeah, I kind of went with the art disc. I kind of wanted the soundtrack, but Culex actually has the soundtrack, so I burned a copy of it. So, all works out in the end. Uh, last for this video, Nintendo selects Pikmin 2. Uh, this is Pikmin 2 redone uh, with Wii controls. I always wanted Pikmin 2 on the GameCube, but the price was always prohibitively expensive because of its rarity. And I will never forget one of the first days I was working at GameStop, and someone walked in and said, Hey, do you have Pikmin 2? Yeah, we got it. It's 40 bucks. Like, huh, how do you expect to sell that to 40 for 40 bucks? Because we will. Because it's, it's that rare and it's that sought after by people who were a fan of the original game and collectors alike. So, I mean, they wanted it. They just didn't want to spend 40 bucks on it. But, I mean, that's what it's worth because it's kind of hard to get a hold of. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I never bought it on, on the GameCube because it was... At the time, 40 bucks, and I had a hard time justifying spending 40 bucks on a used game. Uh, but then I heard that they were doing the re-release on the Wii for 20 bucks. I'm like, sure, 20 bucks for a new game. That's a little more palatable. Uh, the Wii controls are a little weird to get used to, but it's still Pikmin 2. It still has all of the the charm and love that the original Pikmin 2 had, just half the price. Um, I don't know if the release of this one actually affected the GameCube price at all. Um, but that's something I'd kind of be interested in seeing. You know, the, the date on that. But yeah, uh, Pikmin 2, it's one of the Nintendo Selects, so one of their, their greatest hits versions, because it's about time Nintendo started doing the greatest hits reprints. I was kind of hoping they'd do that for, the, you know, a lot of their first-party games that are still, you know, really expensive. Like, all the, all the first-party Nintendo games will sell for 40 bucks used, period, because it's a first-party Nintendo game. So I was kind of hoping they'd do more with that, but it seems like they left it by the way wayside now that the Wii U is out. So, oh well. Um, so yeah, that's part two of the the Wii collection. Um, remember, overlord your face off. Uh, see you guys in the next installment. Till then, later.